the reason, uh, the query is very brief and I'm sure Dr. Zaita has given his answer very succinctly. So I'll keep with that. Holders of old notes, I'm coming to query number eight. Uh, holders of old notes have been, uh, which have been deposited in the accounts of their servants, drivers, assistants, etc. with the objective of subsequently withdrawing them. There is a whole series of queries under that. And if I may use that, especially with, in the context of Binami Act. Uh, what is a Benami transaction we already seen? Slide 10. Now, look at each uh, question vis-a-vis -vis this slide. The holders, uh, what would be the implication under Benami Act for the account holder, that is Benami Dar, that is driver, servant, etc. And for the beneficial owner, that is the person who really owns the money and who has put his money in driver's or servant's account. Three things will be there. The arrangement will be definitely dynamic transaction in the first limb of section 2.9, which you are seeing on the slide. That is the property transferred to or held by X, that is a servant or driver. Consideration is paid by Y, that is the owner, and the property is held for the benefit of Y, that is the owner. So, there it will be hit, we need not go to the other uh, parts of that definition. In case of action under the Benami Act against both, is it possible for the Benami owner or the real owner to, the, to preserve the assets? Now according to me, in view of confiscation which will follow, there is no question of preservation on that asset. Preserve to give it to them for confiscation. <laughs> <laughs> Offenses under the Benami Act is not mentioned in the schedule under PMLA. Hence, can the PML authorities act sue out on receiving information about violation of Benami Act? Apparently, no. But if Section 3 Red Schedule is invoked, as we have seen, there are so many laws uh, in the first schedule, and within that, the first paragraph is the IPC, and within that, there are so many sections which we read robbery, extortion, cheating. Somewhere it will get hit. If you get it, then it applies. I am not saying that you definitely get it, but what I am trying to say is merely by the fact that Benami Act is not a part of the schedule does not mean that you are in a clear position. Please go through the schedule and all the laws and sections within the law very carefully and consult some criminal lawyer, please. Of course, this is a case which is frequently being reported even in the media, so I would like to advise you also from the income tax annual provisions. In fact, this is a, a nice caution to all of us, you know, see, who seeks to deposit the excess cash in the in the names of few relatives and few other persons, like in this case, it was being deposited in the names of servants and other things. Under Section 29 of the Benami Transaction Property Act, you know, this would be, all these account holders would be considered to be Benami Das. And under the law of income tax act, these are not the persons who are the owners of income, neither they are the owners of the neither they are the beneficial owners of this income. In such circumstances, the law of income tax does not mean any taxation liability on these persons. It is the owner who alone would be required to pay tax in respect of this. So once it is established that it is the owner who has deposited this money in the accounts of the Benamidas, then in that case, owner alone would be liable to pay tax. Having said that, you know, if the Benamidas have already paid tax on such in deposits, then also it would not prevent the assessing officer from taxing the true owner of this income. So a care must be taken that, you know, nothing perhaps would be gained by depositing into sundry names, because finally it would be the owner who alone will have to pay tax in respect of this. Okay, I will just uh, supplement this uh, bit. Uh, someone may uh, have a question that we understand uh, the term Benamida, who is that servant or driver. We understand the term, term beneficial owner, that is the real owner of the money. And we also understand that in the first limb of the definition, we are here. But what are the consequences? Now the consequences, government is very smart. They say that the deposited amount cannot be retransferred by the servant to his employer. So that is the first check they have put. 
if already retransferred, suppose they have been smart enough to do that job, getting the money out of the account and handing it back to the owner, the law provides that such retransfer is null and void. So they will get hold of that. The balance in the account, whatever has remained is liable to confiscation and the worst, which is not seen very clearly, is that the four persons will be liable to penal action under section 53 and 54 of the Benami law. Who are those persons? One is the Benami law, that is the driver servant, other is the uh, beneficial owner, that is the owner. The third and fourth is very dangerous, a better. So even if a person is not the beneficial owner, even if the person is not the Benami guy, but suppose he is someone like a bank manager who we are seeing in the news, so they will be considered as a of and they will be hit by this uh, penal provision. Or a person, suppose there is a consultant who induced the person. See, I, I have seen uh, people asking me the questions. I was uh, in the uh, Pratna Sabha of one relative who had died. So, one of the friends said, you must be busy no, now. So I said, why? Uh, no, no, but now this demonetization is going on. Then I understood that the consultants are busy doing what they are doing. So, such consultant would be considered an inducer and he will be hit by the penal provision. Then the consultant who has been made aware today, if he is here, Sir, what is the consequence of this? I have done it. So my simple answer is, there are two consequences. One is the rigorous imprisonment between one to seven years. And you don't have the choice how many years. They will decide. And second is, there is over and above rigorous imprisonment, fine equivalent to 25% of the fair market value of the property. So please know that it is not uh, an easy law. Once it is invoked and the government is waiting only for 31st December to go away, lapse, and then I think they will give full play to this law. And just to supplement what uh, Dr. Said mentioned, uh, I got some information saying that huge number of Jalandhan accounts which were opened. Have, they are now concerned that originally there was a limit of 50,000 and now they are looking into the fact that what if a person deposits more than 50,000 because large number they have deposited more than 50,000. So there are certain conditionality. But the fact that so many Jandhan accounts have been used is an indicator point number one and if you see the Prime Minister's statement saying that do not allow withdrawal from those who are meant for the people who have Got, those, got that money in that account that need not be repaid. I think he is translating in very simple terms what is the crux of the answer given that the Benamidar may not necessarily part with that fund. So I think uh, that's where it is the Prime Minister's thinking seems to come from and one needs to look at it. Let me move on to the next query. Uh, very briefly I put it in this that this is very often practiced by professionals of cer uh, certain professionals that you get free in cash. 60% deposited or 40% in his account, 60% routinely deposited into an account where the first holder is the wife of the professional. That's the case study that is up before you. And as a consequence, I have taken smaller figures deliberately, some uh, figure of 20 lakhs, 180 lakhs, sorry, 1 crore 80 lakhs, is held as fixed deposits in banks in the wife's name and 20 lakhs in the bank account. That is one part. There is no demonetized cash with the person. The question is, he is concerned that if later on he comes into the clutch of the law, he might be subjected to tax provisions that Dr. Shivram mentioned and he might be taxed to the extent of 85% or 107% and therefore he is contemplating going in for the scheme. His question is, does he have to withdraw cash and prematurely end cash fixed deposits in order to avail of the benefit? He was advised that if he is not able to withdraw that much cash, how can he avail the deposit scheme before 30th December? One problem. Can he simply transfer by check from that wife's account 
prematurely in cash deposits, etc., into the Garib Kalyan Yojana deposit scheme and pay the balance of tax by checks itself from that very same account or by routing it through his account. And also, would he be exposed to any liability under the Benami Act, which is now a recurring query, but uh, unless we've got some new facts, we'll not go into detail on that, but the prime answer from Pradeep. We'll take these three issues in a reverse order. First, we will address the Benami properties. A wife, even though if she is a Benami, she is under an accepted category. So therefore, you know, if any account is held in the name of a spouse or a child, whether major or minor, then it is excluded from the application of the Benami Transfer of Property Act. It would not be considered to be an offence under that. So this is one part. So holding his own income in the wife's hands, would not be considered as an offence as far as this Benami transaction act is concerned. The other part is that, you know, is can he make a payment out of the wife's account or from his accounted funds? Now, if one would look into the provisions of Yojana, there is no such prohibition which requires that the taxes are to be paid or the deposits are to be made only out of an income which is a declared income under the Yojana. So, therefore, you can use your sources outside obviously accounted sources for making the payment of taxes and also for making the deposits. So there is no need to have, you know, withdrawn the money from this account and thereafter deposit it. The last is an important question which we, had, which, we had been, which we have been examining earlier in the presentation, introduction time also. Is that he is faced with a situation where under he has been told that the money which he is holding in the form of the fixed deposits with the bank, which have been deposited over a period of years and not necessarily in the financial year 1617, not necessarily after 8 November 2016. Does that asset which is so held could qualify for a declaration is an issue which is sought to be tested. Now if one would look at it, you know, what is otherwise also being sought to be achieved is that he is holding these deposits in the form of the fixed deposits with the bank. The bank is one of the specified entities with whom the deposit could have been made and the person could have been eligible for making a declaration under 199C. Now, the source of this deposit, as, a, as has been otherwise told to us, is also a cash income which has been deposited in the fixed deposits. So if that is so, one would believe that you know that a person would be entitled to make a declaration even though it is held in the form of the fixed deposit and it pertains to an year other than assessment year 1780. Thank you. Right. I'll move to uh, the next question. We'll uh, take it very briefly now as we are gradually running out of time, but I'll address the next question to Dr. Shibra that uh, a deposit of up to two and a half lakhs, many people feel that children's account, you can deposit saying that this is gifts received at the time of passing examinations and uh, birthdays and so on. Would it be possible not to declare under the scheme, merely deposit demonetized currency into the child's account? Let's say a 15 year old or 18 year old uh, uh, son or daughter saying that these are accumulated gifts and then what would be the chances? Would the AO be in a position to invoke 115 BBE? And if yes, whether this account could be linked to the deposits which would otherwise be made by the parent in uh, larger value? Dr. Shivrami. Thank you, Jan. Only thing is that the, it has to be reasonable amount. It cannot be long that how much could be the reasonable amount. But of course, the, sometimes the officer may ask you that, all right, the minors already are in the account and whenever some hundred rupees given by the father or somebody already deposited, oh suddenly two lakh fifty thousand came. That could be question maybe asked by the officer, you may have ready with the answer for that. Otherwise, within reasonable amount, it can be possible. But only from 93, 94 onwards, the minor income is served with the father. So ultimately, father has to whatever may be the amount. Other than in the, in the in the certain of income, if it is struck, then you have to show in the which is that is what the impact the circular 754 
when the issue came under the your VDIS, they were clarified. But one thing you have to just see, suppose you take example, suppose a minor under 64 1A, exceptionally there is suppose the income accrued to minor children account of manual call or the suppose activity involving the application of the specialized knowledge of child artists. Suppose it's having certain cash. Possible I think then it has to be included in the his account only, not with the parents are concerned. That also clarified the circular of the um, civility under 7.4, the question number 31 is concerned. That is under VDS is concerned. With this ultimately I think you have to take the risk of how much you have to show in the hands of the minors is concerned. That's all. Okay, I think this latter part of the question, I think Dr. said I can skip over because uh, that has already been broadly clarified that a minor being a relative not covered under the Vinami Act, so I am not coming to that. You would like to deal with it, yes, please. See, uh, a proposition that depositing the account of uh, spouse or child or brother or sister is in one of the exceptions. But if we read these clauses which deal with this exemption, namely karta, spouse, child, brother, sister, lineal, ascendant, and descendant, it is subject to the caveat that consideration is out of the known sources of income. Now, it means that the burden to prove will be on the person who claims that this is a clear money. It is not a tainted money. So in my view, not all the deposits in the child account can be considered and as Dr. Shivram rightly pointed out, that when you claim that this is out of the gifts received from the relatives, uh, gifts received on the occasion of his academic success, etc. But if you are an educated person, why did you accumulate this up to two like fifty thousand and suddenly deposited. Then it shows is an action which is suspect. And according to me, you cannot prevent the authorities to start the inquiry at least. Uh, what will be the fate of that inquiry is for somebody else to see. But at the moment you cannot go back with a comfort level, at least from uh, the assurance from any of us that there will be no inquiry, just because it is covered by an exception. <coughs> Uh, I'll take another small query just uh, to Dr. Shivram, uh, uh, number 11, uh, where a person is a uh, senior citizen has passed away two months back without making a will. Family found the cash lying in his locker or cupboard, which was found after 8 November. Whether the family members can deposit such cash in their individual bank accounts in addition to whatever is the limit that is normally believable and whether such deposit would be liable to tax and penalty and in whose hands? Dr. Shivram. Yes. A quick answer would be that, you know, that depends upon the status of the father. Suppose father is showing so huge income, whatever reason about would be considered. So father is having no taxable income at all, then one second it is doubtful. Now only thing is that the, as they not left the bill, it has to go as per section 8 of the Insurrection Act. So both are co five those are covered under section 8, it has to be distributed equally. It, it is not possible that only three will distribute and then deposit in their account. That may not be possible. And suppose if you let certain even property, then they may have to go once again for the probate and other things. So it depends upon the facts of the case, you may have to uh, advise the SSC how best it has to go. But possibly suppose we are left only cash. One we think of all right, the open, the cupboard, they found the cash. Let us have joint declaration by all the family members here, this is what we open, this is what is found, and this is how distributed. And if we are able to show the effort, if it all comes to come, we are able to show that yes, this is how we are done. If suppose somebody else, elderly person other than the relative, could be witnessed, then a different point. With this, I think the subject to that, he can uh, make the disclosure subject to limit up whatever the water is to the money, whatever they receive, they can deposit their bank for distance.
we are we are very much influenced by the television nowadays. So I'm going to do a rapid fire round now. So I'll start off a couple of questions one after the other to Pradeep. Uh, one is uh, question number twelve. Uh, business entities which are carrying on cash uh, transactions in businesses which are covered by the presumptive tax provisions. They are not required to maintain books of accounts. The person has, let's say, they have taken an example of 100 lakhs turnover, he is declaring 8 lakhs as per the requirement. His actual income is possibly 16 lakhs. How does he substantiate that he is depositing the difference 8 lakhs but he has no means of Substantiating that, how does he go ahead and take the benefit of the scheme? So there are two parts to this all presumptive taxation schemes. It is saying that you know that what is acceptable to the law is 8% of your turnover. And if you do so, it's fine. You know, it would not ask you further questions. And if you want to inco offer income less than that, you get your accounts audited and filed. It. If you have an income higher than that, should you offer that income or not? If you keep that apart. For the timing, the issue which is sought to be tested in the context of high denomination currency not is the possession of excess cash over the income which has been presumed and declared under the return of income. When the question comes to explaining the excess, which is in excess of the water's return, then obviously the question would be that it would be tested under the provisions of 68 to 69D. In this case, it would be 69 or 69A. Now it is here that can one claim a set off on the ground that yes, that though he had an income which was higher than the one which was presumed to be the income, he still did not declare it. Now is that stand tenable in law? The answer apparently seems to be not so. The second is that you know that if one would carefully read provisions of this 44 AD and AE in particular, it says that any income which is to the extent of 8% of the turnover or an income higher than that, then that is the one which will perhaps, you know, on the constructors of the provisions, I mean reading of other provisions, one would believe that that is the income which one will have to declare in order to find the correct return of income. A person who innocently does not file a return of income of a higher amount is a different story. But a person who return writes an income of 8 lakhs knowing fully well that he is in possession of cash of 16 lakhs of rupees. I do not think that 4480 is a license to not pay tax on the excess cash. This is what would be the view which I would like to share with you. Okay, second, I will keep two or three questions for you, Pradeep Bhai. Second one is, uh, this is again long outstanding letters. Suddenly the letters materialize like what Dr. Shivram mentioned earlier. And although he is not willing to confirm that, the party concerned says I made sales in 2013-14, etc. I am on approval system, so I was showing them as letters. That person has come and given me cash in the demonetized currency, I have deposited it. So it is not income falling within the declaration per se. So uh, what would be the response? Again, the facts here are very, very convoluted. In the sense, the person really is not in receipt of debtor's realization. You know, so therefore it, would, it is not that the debtors have come forward and given him the money. Even assuming that that to be so, it would be something which has been given on or after 8th of November 2016. And therefore the issue...